Alrighty, well, uh, we're getting started here. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to the channel. We, uh, as promised, are following up with another video um, discussing the ever exciting, um, not very upset oriented uh, first round of the playoffs. Um, very, you know, a lot of a lot of interesting um, things happened. Um, got Max and Malik here, boys. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. How are you guys? Doing good. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, no problem. Um, so you know, a lot, lot to discuss here. Obviously, um, really exciting. Uh, I'm currently in a bathroom in a hotel. Um, you know, so uh, good times here. Um, but anyways, let's start off with our first series, um, highly anticipated, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, against the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, Malik managed to convince me to pick Vegas, um, and I thank him for that. Um, I want to tip my cap to him, uh, save my bracket, uh, as I, I actually have Vegas winning the cup, um. But Malik, like you said, going into this series, a lot had to go right for Chicago. What did you think overall of the series? And what did you think about that statement? Did it, did it come to fruition, you think? And, you know, what did you think about Chicago's play overall in this series? Yeah, so this wasn't a series I saw um, a ton of. I caught the end of a few games. But really, you know, from what I did see, Vegas usually controlled the pace pretty well. Usually mm -hmm. if Chicago was getting a chance, it was off the rush or just like a broken play. But, I mean, Vegas ultimately just dominated the possession. They can roll four lines pretty easily mm -hmm. on Chicago. And, I mean, that series went about as I expected it to go, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Chicago's back end with, like, Kajula, I mean, Bovquist, they, they just have some guys, you know, at the back end of that depth who just aren't ready to play in the playoffs. Um, uh, you know, this is a team that was a 12 seed, like like we were talking about, and they weren't expecting, obviously, to be in the playoffs. So this isn't really a playoff-oriented roster. Um, also, you know, I mean, Crawford had one good game, but besides for that, you know, he, he's kind of out of his prime, so it's a pretty dilapidated roster. Um but Max, did you catch a lot of series? What were your, you know, what were your opinions? What were your observations? What did you think? Um, realistically, looking at the series, it probably should have been a sweep. Like the one game that the Chicago Blackhawks got over Vegas, just um, uh, Crawford basically just stole the game all on his own. Turn so the clock back. Realistically, <laughs> probably should have been a sweep. Um, yeah. Uh, let's say I got. The series 100% red. I had Vegas in five. So oh, it's it's one of the few successes I had <laughs> on my uh, bracket. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as, uh, as Malik said, I just Vegas just has the complete roster. And any doubts that I kind of had about Vegas are going into those playoffs, you know, they kind of proved me wrong. Like, um, I really think they are a contender from the cup. And, uh, that I'll, um, we should be able to see, like, coming out of this round, like, how big of a deal they are. But um, I saw all the aspects of a dominant cup contending team in this series. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really, you know, it seemed like all my doubts really kind of were answered by them. I mean, their fourth line is really good. I mean, their fourth line, they have, like, Tuck, Carrier, um, Cousins, and then, you know, they have a great trade for Stevenson. Malik, I know you're weeping hearing that uh, in the background. <laughs> I mean, they could have Bottom six depth. Yeah, um, I, know you, I know you're missing Stevenson. Um, and then, like I was saying, texting in the group chat, I mean, Theodore is a really underrated player. I mean, he's a two-way defenseman. I mean, he can score, and he's pretty good at defense. I mean, you have to look at him, like I was saying, uh, you know, I said in the group chat to these guys, he may be the most underrated defenseman in the NHL, more than Savard. I mean, he's been the best player on a on a decor that's made the Stanley Cup in the playoffs, uh, you know, for every year it's been a franchise and they're a cup favorite this year. Um, it's just a really impressive roster overall and it's a great move getting Leonard um, for goalie insurance. He played pretty well during this series, you know, not stellar, but pretty well. Um I guess, you know, going forward, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. Going forward with Chicago, Malik, what do you do with the roster? 
Um, obviously, you have a lot of young pieces. Uh, Kirby Doc probably looking like the best player out of the draft class so far. Um, you can disagree with me on that if you want. But um, anyway, and I know Max is angry hearing that because of Kai Bukako. Um, but anyways, Malik, what do you think of Chicago's roster and what do they do? I think this leaves Chicago in an interesting position because while they did make it to the playoffs, like you, as you said, they were the 12th seed. Under normal circumstances, they would have, you know, definitely missed. So I think their question they have going forward is, are we a few pieces away from contending for playoffs mm -hmm. like consistently or are they gonna go keep going with their original plan of just kind of bring, letting these young guys uh develop and take on bigger roles and kind of continuing with this retool slash rebuild they have because they still have these veteran pieces on their team and as long as they're there you can't really bottom out mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of how much these playoffs really influence uh like how close they think they are. They have a lot of guys on, I'm looking at their roster now. They have a ton of guys on entry levels. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be an issue later when a lot of those guys will get paid because they still have the uh, Kane and Taze contracts for yeah. a few more years. Taze is an absolute anchor for that payroll. So, you know, honestly, that's their cap. Like, uh, they don't have a lot to play with. There's not too much they can really do. I think they probably won't make too many changes and just see how their younger players develop. Uh, and then once contracts start expiring and these young guys start coming out, then you know, I think you'll really see what identity each team tries to take moving forward. Yeah, it's a difficult situation. I mean, Max, what do you think, real quick? You can... um, honestly, Chicago is a very very interesting situation um like malik said you can't do a full, full retool because you have those older big contracts in the books for the next uh three seasons after the season's over mm -hmm. um that's when uh Kane and Tabes and uh keith his contracts expire uh, in the 2022-23 season mm -hmm. um so it's really important for um them to fill out the rest of the roster with um, younger players who you can sign to entry level deals who can uh, kind of keep them around uh, spot because like Malik said you can't really bottom out when you have uh, Kane and Taves um, and these older high end players who will just see bro uh, keeping you contending or decent for a uh, kind of decent like middle of the road team like with a core like that um, and like currently like they only have. Ending the season, they only have um, about 200k in cap space. Huh. And considering like it's going to be a flat cap in the next few years, that's yeah. uh, going to be even tougher. Yeah. Uh, let's see, their RFAs are Kajula, uh, Kajula, Kubalik, and uh, Strom, like for its, uh, so Kubalik, it's, it's tough. Yes. It, they're in a really, really tough spot. So yeah, um, despite having all these young assets, they're they're still in a cap crunch. Um, and, and trading when you're in a cap crunch like this and you don't have the results to like kind of back it up or yeah. the potential to have results uh, with the roster you have it's it's really it's really tough so I mean maybe they can work some magic with some trades to free up space like sod for six million uh, that's a tough contract to have I think like he's decent but yeah. I'm not sure six million decent mm -hmm. but honestly like they don't have that many like expensive contracts to get the big ones like Kane and Taves mm -hmm. and Keith. Um, but yeah. other than that, uh, and Saad, but other than that, like you have a couple defensemen with four million. You have their fourth most paid forward is Zach Smith with three million. Oh, like, it's not three million that mm -hmm. big of contracts. It just kind of adds up, and they're just in a tough spot. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it'll it's be hard really to form an identity when you have um, when you have like people on both ends of the spectrum like you have your aging core and the new guys coming in and it's hard to like work for the future yeah yeah looking at it it's gonna be important to see how much the leak gets or if they yeah. can even honestly like hold on to it because the break gets, extension kicks in as well he's gonna be making oh, yeah. 6.4 mil mm. and you know if you you know you can't 30 goals is nothing to scoff at like yeah, for and he's young. How much does he make? Is it a one-off? Is he 
you gonna be that good moving yeah. forward? Uh, yeah, they're in an interesting spot. They really, the they might have to dump Saad, honestly. Like Max is saying, they're gonna have to probably dump something. And I mean, while the playoffs is always fun and it's nice that they got in there, I, I kind of wonder. They're, they're thinking now, okay, would have been nice if they had just missed and had a chance at, you know, chance at first. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that would have, that would have paid off. Also, instead. Crawford's a UFA next year. So, yeah, the, you know, the, yeah, man. I guess awesome. we'll see Dom in the net in two years, huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> I think Crawford coming off, he can come back. I mean, obviously, they want to. Um, but yeah, it won't be at six mil, I think. I think they can probably save some money in goaltending. Yeah. So, I mean, they're going to have a lot of decisions to make moving forward. But. I think this year was at least encouraging with a lot of their younger players. I think it at least takes all of that. Yeah, and for the fan base, I think just to see that, you know, that core out there again with Tane, Kays, and Keith, I mean, that might be their po- last playoff run ever together. Um, but anyways, let's move on to the next series in the team that will be taking on the Vegas Golden Knights, and that is the Vancouver Canucks. Um, going into this, I said that I was most positive that the Blues would win this series. Uh, that would be the biggest surprise for me. Um, you know, more surprising than Arizona winning or um, it's another example, CBJ or Montreal. Um, and of course, the Vancouver won. Um, really surprising for me. Um, Blues really kind of plagued by one inconsistent goaltending. Um, you know, I think the scoring was kind of there. Um, and the D was decent, but it was really, you know, they're plagued by inconsistent goaltending, um, and Vancouver can score, man. Um, but anyways, what did you guys think of this series? Um, Max, what did you, you know, think, what is your observations, et cetera? Um, what did you think of Vancouver's play and, and St. Louis too? Uh, I thought Vancouver was extremely impressive in the series. Um, they showed a lot more cohesiveness, um, and, you know, playoff style play that I didn't really expect out of them. Um, that uh, we said going into it that um, uh, I had blues because, um, you know, I felt like they'd wake up and uh, even though they had a bad round round and eventually they just come into playoff form. Yeah. And I don't think it's not that they, they as a team did come into playoff form. It's more uh, Bennington not getting into yeah. playoff form because I think every, every other aspect besides goaltending um, – I think they were pretty decent in, but yeah. you know, when your goal is posting uh, four goals against average and the 850 save percentage, <laughs> it's, it's hard to win a playoff series. Hard to compete. Um, yeah. And Allen played well, I guess. He um, did, yeah. He I did. don't know why they get Bennington was starting game six, but I don't, Agreed, yeah. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, interesting. It was very impressive to hear her. That's basically the bottom line of it, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I hate to get back into the you know statement, but they have a they have a really good roster, and I think it's pretty well put together. I mean, you pair Hughes with Tanev, um, they're that's a really effective pair. Um, it's it's really good. Um, and then Edler, uh, and Myers, you know, I mean, that's another good pair, and then. They really have. They can score. Like they, they can really score on on breakaway. They scored a lot on breakaways. Um, you know, they did get some uh, presence wrapped with bow ties from Bennington um, and those uh, softies that he let in. Um, but you know, I was really impressed with Vancouver. Um, Malik, going into the next round, are you worried about Markstrom? You know, uh, you know, against this just absolute onslaught from the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, are you worried about his play and? Kind of, who do you expect to win the series? What do you expect things to turn out? I'm, I'm not as worried about Markstrom. I am worried about their blue line. If their blue line can handle the Vegas attack. Uh, um, it's funny with that uh, Vancouver St. Louis series. I kind of like the, kind of the opposite of what I thought would happen between like between their <laughs> series and like the Boston Carolina series. I thought St. Louis was going to be the one who uh, woke up sooner rather than later and that Boston would really be struggling, but it ended up being the opposite. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I think Vancouver, they definitely showed, you know, a lot of maturity in 
in that win. Uh, Tana, you know, I think he's really proven himself. I think he's always been pretty good. He just can't stay healthy. Um, but like a healthy Tanev is very good. Is a good player. And you know, I think they're really going to give Vegas a run for their money. I think you know 